نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من اهلي اللهم فكنا في الدين رب زدني علما اللهم الهمنا رشدا وعزنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه اللهم ارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه امين ثم امين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته today we will be starting our discussion from chapter number 2 of surah al-baqara verse 8 to 19 inshallah words number 8 allah says wa min an-nas man yaqulu amanna billahi wa bil yawmil akhir wa ma hum bi mu'minin and of people are some who say we believe in allah and the last day but they are not believers in the words allah is talking about a group of people who claim who announce that they are believers but in the sight of allah their belief is not acceptable or it is not up to the mark words number 9 they think to deceive allah and those who believe but they deceive not except themselves and perceive it not so further talking about them allah says that this group of people whose faith or belief is not acceptable for allah they try to cheat or they try to deceive allah and the believers by announcing about their belief but for all facts and purposes no can nobody no one can cheat or deceive allah who is all seeing he is all hearing he is all knowing al asmi al khabir al basir verse number 10 allah says in their hearts is a disease so allah has increased their disease and for them is a painful punishment why because they habitually used to lie now further talking about the same group of people in this verse allah is explaining that these people who claim and announce that they are believers but allah does not consider their belief as acceptable allah says explaining about their condition and their final status of these people allah says that they are suffering from a disease of their heart and that they will be suffering from a painful punishment now we all know that a disease illness falling sick is something we are all afraid of we all fear that and more with this disease allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning that he himself has increased the disease and the most important thing is that allah is mentioning a very painful punishment for all the people who are suffering from this disease so we need to understand this disease and this condition very clearly now before i go ahead with discussing about the condition i would want to elaborate in words of quran what actually the painful punishment allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned for these people and what this disease is <coughs> this disease is the disease of hypocrisy and the painful punishment which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned for the hypocrites is in the verse 140 of surah an-nisa where allah says inna allah jami'ul munafiqina wal kafirina fi jahannam jami'a there is absolutely no doubt inna there is absolutely no doubt that allah is going to gather all the hypocrites and all the non believers in the hell fire together 
in this verse 140 of Surah An-Nisa, if we uh, try to relate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that hypocrites and non-believers will all be gathered in the hellfire, but the name of, of the mention of the hypocrites comes before the non-believers. And so it we can assume that the hypocrites will be put into the hell before the non-believers. And we can relate that anything which is dropped before the other thing is at a lower level. So from this verse, we can indirectly assume that in the hell, the hypocrites will be at the lower level as compared to the non-believers. But rather than indirectly assuming in the verse number 145, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly explained this. Allah says, there is absolutely no doubt that al all the hypocrites, all the hypocrites will be in the lowest grade of hell fire. And what will happen? you will find no helper, no savior for themselves, for them who will take them out of the hellfire. So this exactly is the painful punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. Now, after knowing such a terrible punishment, such a painful punishment, we should need to understand the state and this condition. What is this disease? This disease is hypocrisy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is clearly saying that it is a condition of the heart. In their hearts is the disease of hypocrisy. Remember, hypocrisy, it starts as a seed and the seed lands up in the heart and there it gets rooted up and it gets strong and from here like the heart it pumps the blood to the whole of the body from here the hypocrisy which has seeded up in the heart from here it is pumped to the rest of the body and slowly and steadily all the parts of the body and all the organs of the body they get hypocritical like slowly and steadily, the eyes, the hands, the feet, the tongue, and finally the whole body becomes the body of a hypocrite. So it is the disease which starts from the heart. But remember, it is not just a disease of the heart. It is a disease which spreads like cancer and it metastasizes and it involves the whole body. And moreover, you know what? This disease is contagious. It is an infectious disease. It passes from one to the other. And that is exactly why we need to identify this condition and stay away from hypocrites or such an environment or their company or such gatherings. Now, as far as this disease of hypocrisy is concerned, we need to understand the signs and symptoms for the prevention and for the diagnosis and for the treatment of condition. Because you know that if we need to protect ourselves from a disease and to save ourselves from the disease or to treat a disease once it happens, we need to do what? We need to understand the signs and the symptoms of the disease for its prevention and for treatment. So to save ourselves from the grievous punishment of hypocrites, we need to understand the signs of hypocrisy. In Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the signs of hypocrisy in many, many chapters of Quran. And the purpose is to help us all able, uh, to able make us all capable of identifying the condition at a very early stage. And the purpose of learning the signs of hypocrisy is not to label, start labeling people around us as hypocrites, but the first purpose is to do a self-analysis. 
a self analysis and self accountability and to try to catch any signs in our own personality if we identify any signs of hypocrisy in our personality then what do we need to do is we need to confess and accept and we need to regret and we need to repent and seek forgiveness and make istighfar and make promise to try to eradicate these traits, uh, traits and ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help in our tazkiyah. And the second purpose is that if we identify these traits of hypocrisy in people around us, then because I've just mentioned that it spreads from one to another, like infectious and contagious diseases, then rather than just labeling and causing, calling them by the name of hypocrites, we must just avoid intimate relation. Intimate relationships, like relationships of counseling and sharing secrets and copying and idealizing or glamorizing such people. And not only this, but we should also protect our children from such a company and such friends and such get togethers and environments to save ourselves and our children from any form of hypocrisy if we identify it in time. Now, coming to the signs of the traits of a hypocrite. In verse number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained one sign or trait of hypocrite is what? Because they are habitual to telling lies. The first trait of a hypocrite, which is mentioned here in Surah Baqarah in the start of Quran is that hypocrite are liars. They tell liars, they are habitual liars. And you know what? In a hadith in the narration of uh, Prophet Sallallahu as Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrates in Bukhari and Muslim. Here also the first trait of a hypocrite has been explained as telling lies. In the narration of Hazrat Abu Huraira, Prophet Sallallahu said, Ayatul Munafiq Ruba'a, the traits or the characteristics of the hypocrites are four. Is a hadatha, when he talks, he tells lies. Is a ahada or adara, or there are words akhlafa. When he makes a promise, he breaks it. Is a tomana hana. When he is given something as a trust, he is he is distrustful. He is not trustworthy. Is a hasama fajara. When he fights, he erupts. He erupts, he uses bad or foul language. So these four are the traits of a hypocrite as according to Hadith of Muslim and Bukhari and the words of the Hadith and Muslim Prophet Sallallahu further added, despite the fact that he, he offers Salah, he fasts and he pays Zakah. So remember that if a person is a believer but he is also a liar. Despite the fact he, he prays, he fasts, he still has a percentage of hypocrisy in his personality. Verse number 11 and 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is now mentioning some other traits of the hypocrites, Allah says. And when it is said to them, to them means whom? To the hypocrites. When it is said to them, do not, cause corruption on earth, they say, we are but reformers. Unquestionably, it is they who are the corruptors, but they perceive it not. So in these two verses, verse number 11 and 12, the next trait we gather is that they cause corruption and they create malice around them. The extent of corruption and facade and fitna will obviously be related to the authority and the power they have. For example, if uh, the ruler, the head of the department, the head of the state of a country is a hypocrite, then obviously he will cause corruption and fitna in the whole of the state, in all of the country. Then if the head of the department is a hypocrite, 
he will create corruption and fitna and fasad and malice and corruption in the department he's entrusted in. Then if the head of a family is a hypocrite, he will cause corruption in his family. I will give you a few examples to understand this. You know, for example, if there is a lady who teaches Quran in Hadith, but in her own house, she is a source of creating a misunderstanding or marsh, uh, uh, any forms of marital disagreements between her son and her daughter-in-law. You know what? Despite the fact that she is a teacher of Quran and Hadith, but because of the fact that she is creating disagreement and misunderstandings between the son and the daughter-in-law, she has a trait of hypocrisy. Similarly, another, another lady, she might be offering tahajjud. She might be, she might be in a habit of uh, keeping supererogatory fasts beyond the month of Ramazan. But at the same time, she poisons her husband against his mother, against his sisters and brothers, and she sees to it, and she makes sure that the relationship of her husband with his relationship of kin, they are severed. Then this lady, despite all the worships, she has a trait of hypocrisy. So this is the second trait which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned here in this verse. And uh, in the verse number 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are the corruptors and they perceive it not. And they, in fact, they claim what? That they are reformers. You know, hypocrites on their face value, they appear to be very polite, very polite and courteous and soft-spoken and refined, and they claim to be reformers. Like, I will make you understand this by another example. For example, there is, uh, there is a lady, and uh, she, is, uh, she has her father-in-law and mother-in-law who are old and who are sick. And this daughter-in-law, this lady, she is looking after them, and she's attending to all the requirements of the father-in-law and the mother-in-law. But you know what happens one day, one of her friends or a sister, she comes in and she starts advising this lady. And she comes up with advices like, she comes up and starts saying, oh, what bad form you've ended up in. What awfully pathetic situation you are in. Look at yourself. I just can't tolerate seeing you in this state of affairs. Look at your clothes. Look at your hair. You don't have any time for yourself. You are so very busy attending these old forks that you've started ignoring yourself. See, what have you done to yourself? Why, Why do you have to take care of all of your sick parent-in-laws, your, your husband is three brothers. Why don't they share the load? Why don't they take all, why don't they all take turns? You see, what is this? Who is this friend? And what is the advice of this friend is a total corruption. And in fact, they are posing as reformers. This daughter-in-law was in a perfect state. She was working, she was working hard to look after the old in-laws and make an ideal workout for her Jannah. But the so-called friend or her dear sister, posing to be a very caring friend or a kind, caring sister, she comes up with a totally corrupting advice. Prophet Salaam has said what? Cursed may, cursed may be he who finds one or both of his parents in old age and does not acquire Jannah by serving them. So the advice of this friend or the advice of this loving and caring sister is what? 
it is a total corruption. And this friend has thus what? Has a trait, has a temperament of what? Hypocrisy. Verse 13, Allah says, when it is said to them, them is what? The hypocrites. When it is said to them, believe as the people have believed, they say, should we believe as the foolish people have believed? Unquestionably, it is they who are foolish, but they know it not. <coughs> So now in verse number 13, the next trait Allah is mentioning in this verse is that when these hypocrites, they are invited towards perfecting their belief and faith, they consider it as a sheer foolishness. So hypocrites are those who consider believers as foolish and silly people. They are those who label believers as you might have seen, you might have come across people labeling practicing Muslims as fanatics, as fundamentalists, calling them orthodox, telling that they are crazy and they are queer people, calling women or Muslim women as ninja turtles and many other names and mocking them and making fun of them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verse is explaining another trait. Verse 14, Allah says, and when they meet those who believe, they say we believe. They say we believe, but when they are alone with their evil ones, they say, indeed, we are with you. We were only mockers. So now here, another trait is highlighted that there is a difference in the outward and inward behavior of a hypocrite. The hypocrite has a double face. <coughs> they have a double face and they have a difference in their outward and inward behaviors. Verse 15, Allah says, by Allah, but Allah mocks them and prolongs them in their transgression while they, <coughs> they wander blindly. Those are the ones who have purchased error in exchange for guidance. So their transaction has bought has brought no profit, nor were they guided. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the result is that they will not be among the guided ones. And because of this transaction, which they are making, rather than believing, they are trying to be hypocritical. So they have acquired no worldly prophets and no prophets in, uh, in the hereafter, and they will not be amongst the guided ones. Now, here we have learned in these verses, we have learned four traits or characteristics of the hypocrites. Now, I would also want to add a few more traits of hypocrites as narrated by the words of Prophet In a narration in Bukhari, Prophet said that it is a hypocrite who finds the Fajr and the Isha prayers difficult. So a person who finds it difficult to get up early in the morning and offer his Fajr prayers or after a hectic day and after a very uh, after all the hard work of the day he finds it difficult to offer the isha prayer so this is a trait of a hypocrite then in another word prophet sallam said that it is the salah of asr it is the asr salah of a hypocrite that he keeps looking towards the sun, that he just keeps on gazing towards the sun. It means what? That he just wastes time out of sheer idleness or laziness and delays the salah without any commitment. And then he gets up to offer the salah 
and he hardly remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and makes four short sajdas. So this is the salah of a hypocrite who out of sheer idleness just keeps on postponing the salah. And when he offers the salah, he does not remember Allah. Instead, he remembers all his worldly affairs and he makes a very short and quick sajadas and prostrations. So this is the salah of a hypocrite. In another trait, Prophet said that a person who never does jihad and doesn't even have a desire to do jihad in the path of Allah dies in a state of hypocrisy. So these were the few traits which we have learned of a hypocrite from Quran and Hadith. Now, before proceeding with the next verse, I would uh, want to highlight the supplication which Prophet ﷺ has taught all of us to save ourselves from hypocrisy and indirectly from the painful punishment of the lowest grade of hellfire. The words of the uh, supplication are, Allahumma tuhir qalbi min nifaki wa amali min riyai wa lisani min al-qadabi wa aini min al-khayanati inna ka ta'lamu man khainat al-aini wa ma tuhfi sudur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify my soul from hypocrisy and my actions from any form of exhibition and demonstration and riya and show off and my speech from all forms of falsehood or telling lies and my eyes, my sight, my gaze from being, from being lack of all forms of trust because there's absolutely no doubt that you know of all distrust of, of eyes and of the sight, and you know of all which is hidden in our souls. Now, after this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained in detail the verse number 17 onwards, Allah has talked about two types of hypocrites. The first type of hypocrites is a hypocrite of belief or hypocrites of faith. And the second type of hypocrites are the hypocrites of actions or deeds. Now, talking about the first type of hypocrite, that is the hypocrites of belief and faith. Verse number 17, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, their example is that of one who kindled a fire but when it illuminated what was around him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away their light and left them in darkness so they could not see. Here in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained the parable or the example of a person who lit up a fire. And because of lighting up a fire, he illuminated his environment and all the companions who were in this environment, they also become, they became enlightened in his company. But out of these companions, there was one person who was a hypocrite. And despite being this environment, he was, he was deprived of this enlightened environment. Now, in this example or this parable, the person who kindled a fire refers to whom? It refers to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was sent the revelations and the revelations of the Quran are what enlightened the soul of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then when he himself was enlightened with the teachings of Quran and with the verses, enlightening verses of the Quran, he enlightened his companions. He brought and he taught these verses and these chapters of Quran to his companions 
and they were also enlightened and they became the towers of these light and they became the lamps emitting the lights of Quran and Hadith. And these were the companions who, were, who had converted to Islam. But in the same environment, in the same enlightened environment, the environment which was enlightened by the teachings and by the verses of Quran, there were people who were obstinate. There were people who were stubborn and they refused to, to change the previous belief. <coughs> they just resisted very obstinately and stubbornly resisted a change in their ancestral beliefs. And they hence stayed as the hypocrites of belief. For them, Allah says, they are what? They are deaf, they are dumb, they are blind. So they will not return to the right path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will neither be guided and they will not benefit from any forms of guidance. So this explains and it highlights to all of us how important it is to have the correct belief and to have the correct faith and how very important it is to avoid obstinacy and stubbornness in our lives. Then in verse Number 18 and 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, or it is like a rainstorm. Now in these two verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to explain the state of affairs and condition of a hypocrite who is a hypocrite of action and deeds. Allah says, or it is like a rainstorm from the sky within which is darkness, thunder, and lightning, they put their fingers in their ears against the thunder claps in dread of death. But Allah is encompassing of the disbelievers. The lightning almost snatches away, snatches away their sight. Every time it lights the way for them, they walk therein. But when darkness comes over them, they stand still. And if Allah had willed, he could have taken away their hearing and their sight. Indeed, Allah is over all things competent. Now, in these two verses, verses number 18 and 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates a parable of a traveler. First, I will try to make you understand the example and then it will, I will relate it with the actual condition of a hypocrite. Now, in this situation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is narrating the condition of a traveler who is traveling in the night. And in the night where there is rain and thunderstorms, when lightning strikes and it lights the way the person of the traveler starts walking. But when it stops and then darkness spreads, the, the traveler just stands still. And when there is thunder and there is roaring, because out of, out of fear of his death, he puts fingers in his ear. This person actually symbolizes what? This person actually symbolizes the a person who is what? Who is a person who is a hypocrite. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this person, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explained, this person actually symbolizes a Muslim reading the Quran, a student of the Quran. Quran itself at many places explains the teaching of Quran or the places where Quran is being taught. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relates this as a heavy rainfall because you know, when it rains, the rain enriches the soil and from the soil grows the plantation and thick vegetations. So 
Very similarly, after the teachings of Quran, the belief, the faith, and the good deeds, they grow and they flourish. So in this example, the, the verses are explaining the status of a student of Quran when he's going through and he is or she is receiving the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What happens is that there are certain commandments of Allah or orders and do's and don'ts of Allah would seem easy and they are adoptable. So the person or the student readily accepts and adopts them and starts acting upon the easy orders of Allah. But when he goes through and when he re reads or he learns some do's and don'ts of Quran which seem very really difficult to adopt or act upon, then he just stops and stands still. So by these two verses, all such Muslims or all such students of Quran who act upon the orders of Allah, they find easy and they quit or they leave the obedience of orders which they find socially, economically, emotionally difficult to adopt. Remember, all such people, according to these verses, are hypocrites. And we will obviously understand that they are different people. They will find different orders difficult. Difficult or heavy things will be difficult, would be different for different people. For example, for some, leaving usury, riba, will be extremely difficult. For some, adopting the Islamic dress code will be very, very difficult. For some, to give up the habit of backbiting or slandering will be very difficult. So in nutshell, hypocrite is a person. Our hypocrisy is to pick and choose in Islam and Quran, to take up, to obey, to follow, to accept the easy orders and to leave, to quit or to disobey those one finds difficult to obey. This pick and choose is hypocrisy. This pick and choose is a hypocrisy. Being a Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us, sami'na wa atuhna. What do we need to say? That we are going to listen to the orders and the teachings of Quran and Hadith and Sunnah. And we're going to say what? Atu'ana. We obey them. Sami'na wa aswayna. That we listen to them and we disobey them. This is the behavior of the Jews, of the Christians. Allah has ordered all Muslims to do what? Enter into Islam totally, completely. A Muslim is expected to plunge into, to dive into the ocean of Islam and get the color of Islam. The color of Islam and which is better than the color of Islam. It is hypocrisy. It is a hypocrite who says that Salah, okay, we will offer five times Salah. But look, if you ask us to adopt the dress code of Salah the rest of the day <coughs> in our life, then sorry, it is socially not possible for me. Our repetition, our job, our promotion, they're all likely to suffer if we accept and if we adopt this dress code of Salah in the rest of our lives. Or if somebody says, if you ask us to spend zakat or to give sadaqat, then okay, we are perfectly fine with it. And we will generously spend at the path of Allah. But look, if in our monetary matters, if you expect or you suggest us to leave usually this banking system, the loans, and we are extremely sorry, this is not possible for us. Our business, our industry, our trade will be affected. We will suffer business losses. We will be deprived of certain business profits. This is not doable. This is a no-go zone for us. Then another person coming in 
and just saying, if you ask me to do zikr, keep on reciting tasbiha, okay, I will do so. But if you ask me to give up backbiting, then you know what? I'm so much in the habit. It seems like next to impossible for me to control my speech and mind my conversation so minutely. So this all, this taking some and leaving some from the orders of Quran and Hadith and Sunnah, picking and choosing from Islam is hypocrisy. Allahumma tuhir qalbi min al-nifaki wa amali min al-riyai wa lissani min al-qazabi wa ayni min al-khayanati inna ka ta'lamu man khayanati al-ayni wa ma tuhbi al-sudur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all save ourselves from hypocrisy. Help us, guide us, protect us all from the traits of a hypocrite. Rabbana la tuzay qulubana ba'da is hadaytana wa hablana milatunka rahma innaka anta wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaqbiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil aizzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihil.